It's 2018, it has been the year of Kubernetes and it's not going to slow down. It's actually been kind of amazing to see. We've had the development of Kubernetes and literally 2017 it still felt like it was the geeks. But now every single enterprise we talk to is looking at Kubernetes. It's a phenomenon. We're going to see an entire rebuilding of the stack using Kubernetes and it's going to touch networking, it's going to touch storage, it's going to touch compute. This is a huge, huge secular shift. It's kind of interesting to see. So for a long time, legacy modernization, you take advantage of the opportunities and platforms that you've got. But look, when you look at building, and we're building all the time in Shoreditch, when I do my walking around Shoreditch thing, why am I always so excited about, you know, building as an analogy? Well, mostly because it works, right? And so here's the thing. Shoreditch has just changed immeasurably in the last couple of years. Um, and one of the things, this is called the city fringe. When they first said, we're going to have tall buildings around here. I was like, yeah, that's going to take ages. That's not really going to happen. And look at it now. Like everywhere you look, there's buildings, more buildings, taller buildings. And here's the thing about architecture, right, in terms of the model and what I'm talking about, is there's different ways of looking at it. You know, from an economic standpoint, you would imagine that, you know, it makes sense to refit the buildings you've got. But actually, that's not the way it works. When you look at physical architecture, what they do is it's cheaper for them to tear it down and start again from scratch. That's what we're seeing in London, right? And there are interesting things there. They literally, they say to themselves, okay, um, you know, buildings are now ephemeral. So they're building with the knowledge that because of that sort of economics, they're all gonna get torn down again in 20 years. So that building there, funnily enough, Amazon owns that. And if we're talking about Kubernetes, it's definitely worth mentioning Amazon. So what are some of the things that happened in 2018 that are really worth considering? All of the cloud players are all in on Kubernetes. AKS from Azure, GA'd in June. EKS from Amazon, GA'd in June. A month later in July, Google comes in and they're like, okay, now we're going on-prem. It's kind of amazing. So now we're talking about Kubernetes hybrid managed by the cloud. Cisco's popped up. They've got to deal with Amazon. In terms of the structural shift that I'm talking about and this idea that we're going to rebuild the entire stack, that's exactly where the rubber hit the road in October. IBM's like, boom, we're buying Red Hat. Huge, ridiculous deal. I mean, $34 billion. IBM, it's like a third of IBM's value being bet. And People always talk, oh, we're doing a bet on this, we're doing a bet on that, an acquisition, acquisition perspective. IBM buying Red Hat really is a bet. And it's interesting to me, in particular, because it's moving down the stack. IBM's been, move up the stack, move up the stack, spin off all the stuff that is infrastructure. So we're not gonna be in the infrastructure business, we're gonna be in the higher value services business, which makes a lot of sense. But at some point, if there is gonna be a fundamental, secular infrastructure rebuild, you want to be in that market. Look, it, IBM isn't just buying Red Hat because of OpenShift, which is uh, Red Hat's platform for Kubernetes, but that's definitely a huge, huge part of the reasoning behind it. Pulling all of that together, and then boom, so that was October. November, VMware's like, yeah, we're doing this as well. We've already got Pivotal. Pivotal's got cont container services, PKS. And, uh, and then what happens, they're like, actually, we're going to buy Heptio because we need more expertise. We want to be seen as a Kubernetes leader. So why is Heptio so important? Look, Craig McClucky and Joe Better, they were, the, they were the founders of the Kubernetes project. So suddenly VMware is like, look, we're going to have some ownership here. And I think what we've got now is a battle royale between IBM and VMware for all of those workloads that are going to be hybrid enterprise workloads for the next few years. And look, it's easy to say, oh, nobody's going to use that stuff. Everybody's using moving to serverless. Everyone's just, just going to use Amazon. But to me, that doesn't really make sense, mostly because of the conversations I'm having. You want to develop in-house. And, you know, I like craft. Maybe this is taking it a little bit far. But look, you know, sometimes people are going to roll their own. They're going to make their own pasta. You know, they're going to make their own pasta. They're going to be an organization that says, actually, you know, we don't want to buy something 
packaged, there isn't something off the shelf that is going to give us what we need. So why not, why not actually make it? Let's use technology to do that. 2018, it has been an absolutely banner, bang up year for Kubernetes. Uh, that's the standard that we're going to rebuild the technology stack, network, storage, operating systems and everything else. Sure, we're going to have serverless, we're going to have that cloud offering, we're going to have a two different models that are emerging and being successful in terms of enterprise adoption of technology. But here's the thing, um, you know, 2019, 2020, we're going to be moving from hiring proofs of concepts into really serious production work. But one of the things to understand is that everything is ephemeral. Everything is going to change. And look, here's this building. Um, they built it over the last couple of years. This surface here is going to rust. Um, I've talked to the builders. It's actually all going to be gone within 25 years. They know that. This is ephemeral infrastructure. Like the game has changed. The game of long-term support has changed. Organizations are going to move faster. They're going to move, take advantage of new technology all the time. And there's an expectation that nothing lasts forever. And in that kind of world, I think that we're going to see more adoption of Kubernetes. And yeah, 2019, it's going to be a really good year.